28. Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. For Fishing the DMV to survive through 2024 and beyond, we need 100 Patreon subscribers. We are only 28 Patreon subscribers away from hitting our first goal. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Senkos or a Jackhammer Chatterbait, Patreon members will receive 5% off all of their orders every month to Jake's Bait and Tackle. They'll be entered to win weekly prize giveaways, access to a private Facebook group community, and they'll also have access to Patreon membership only videos, live streams, and content. For more information, check the link down below or click the link above my head. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and I have a guest host tonight. Hey, I'm Carly Bird. <laughs> that was the weirdest intro you've ever done. She runs two other podcasts, and uh, she went like with this, my name's Bootstrap. Stop! What's up? My name's Butch. Been here for a while in these parts. Tom's nickname for me is Bootstrap. That's because you like to do all the horse stuff and you want to be a cowboy really badly. Anyway, today's an interesting episode. Uh, generally speaking, when we do these Monday Night Lives, we do a call-in show. We do a tips and tricks. We do what's new at Jake's or we have on a really cool guest. But because today, and, and I, I want to just bring up this first one uh, from TP. Uh, TP. Um, sorry if this is your first uh, first time seeing the live show. I apologize for that just because... Uh, it's a little different. Yeah, it's a little different this time compared to the other ones because we're just doing a recap of the Richmond Fishing Expo just for everybody to say thank you. But generally, they're really cool. So yeah, I know I'm killing the whole vibe there. And we got Dead Drift in the house. Dead Drift. Uh, Dead Drift. Uh, I'm going to type him real quick. Can you keep talking, Carly, while I type to him real quick? Okay. Fishing. What? You're talking while you're typing. I'm not going to talk over you while you're typing. Okay, as soon as you're done that, I would like to give a shout out. Anyway, so while I continue now, we've done this a couple of times. As you can tell, the energy is fantastic. Dead Drift, if you would like to come on the show, please let me know. Uh, text me. You you have my number. Um, I think, does he have my number? Does he have your number? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. If you have my number, text me real quick, and I'll send you a link, and I'll have you come on the show real quick just to kind of hype up the Richmond Fishing Expo. I texted Jared as well um, to see if he wanted to come on just to kind of talk about what happened. We had a heck of a week, and one reason... We don't have a guest tonight. Going into this week, we were thinking um, that today was just going to be about creating clips, getting ready for the rest of the week. But I decided I am so done with missing Monday Night Lives. We went six and a half months without missing a Monday night. And then Christmas happened, which is stupid. And we had to miss a week. Uh, we missed a couple of weeks you there. You got sick. And That's I got sick. I, yeah, I almost died too, which really sucked. Yeah. And I'm done missing Monday nights. So my goal is from here until next New Year's Eve or Christmas, not to miss another Monday night. So I wasn't going to miss tonight at all. Um, so we're here today, and I pulled her up as a guest. So we're just going to talk about uh, the Richmond Fishing Expo, the pros, the cons, and what we kind of thought of it, because this was our second year doing this thing, and a lot has changed. So I'm going to pass it on to my co-host here. What did you think about Richmond Fishing Expo 2.0, the electric boogaloo? All right, so I went in with, um, I would say, lower expectations just because you know obviously you're going to compare your experiences to last year and be like okay well i kind of expect the same thing from last year to happen this year right so last year it was just it was a hustling time man we all weekend long i was just like running around making shorts like introducing myself being like hey i'm with fishing mm -hmm. the dmv hey we're just gonna like make some content and post it on our page and then we'll tag you what's your instagram handle what's your facebook etc how do we get in contact with you blah 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 we're gonna put you on our tiktoks or instagram that was kind of like last year's like little little i don't know diddly is what i want to call it but what the hell's diddly mean? i don't know just go with it <laughs> so then and then also kind of like introduce us like hey we're fishing the dmv uh this is what we do all right and then this year was kind of different and um it was more like hey we're fishing the dmv like we've been established for the past two years we know like a lot of people now we have a lot of supporters we have a lot of content to kind of back ourselves up and be like we actually know what we're talking about he knows what he's talking about not me 
Anyway, I do not know what I'm talking so about. So this year, this it kind of just blew my mind the amount of people that I tried to hand a sticker to or a flyer to and be like, hey, are you familiar with the show? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm already a subscriber. And it just like, <clears throat> like, it got me so excited every single time somebody said that. Mm. And it got me so hyped. And I'm like, oh, my God, thank you. And I just wanted to give everybody a big old hug and be like, thank you so much for your support for the show, support for Thomas and it just um, she's very passionate. I'm extremely passionate about everything that you do. No, I said you're you're extremely passionate, which is also good for your other show. But we'll plug your other show later. Um, yeah, she has her own podcast too. Spoiler warnings. But anyway, um, yeah, like I thought we the best way to go about this because I was like when we're in the car driving back, like what you guys don't appreciate it's like when you do these things. And it was funny because I told you this stuff did. It's, I've been doing this for a while. I'm not, like not like a professional or whatever. But I've been doing it longer than you have. I told you, like, when you do, when you are live or you're with people, it's like there's a high. Like, Joe Rogan talks about this on his podcast. Like, when you get off stage, like, there's this weird high. It's hard to come down from it. Yeah. And it's not like the Joe Rogan, I think, like, high when he has, like, a billion people. But when you do this stuff, you're like, you're energized. You're like, oh, it's no big deal. So in her podcast that she does, um, she, she did one that lasted till 10. And then she walks in the bedroom sure. and she's like, you're right. <laughs> there's a high there because, like, it's hard when you have a live audience you're dealing with people, like, just to come down from that. Which is running so, around the house for the next, like, 30 minutes. Yeah. To and that all lines up with when you come back from the Richmond Expo that night on Sunday, you're wired for sound after three days. Honestly, three and a half days, just go, go, go. Yeah. And we were just vomiting up our greatest hits and our thoughts about the Expo. And that's where this whole show came from is, like, why don't we just put this pen to pad? But I think the way to – take our thoughts because they were just all over the place. Let's start Thursday to let's go really start with Friday. So Friday. Yeah. I'll lead us off with this and get and just get your thoughts. So Friday we get there. We I mean f Thursday we get all set up and it would be an injustice. It would be a crime against God and nature to not say this. Jared Mounts. Um he He's a real is VP. of Jake Spain Tackle. I I he makes you believe in religion that there is there are nice people out there because he basically carried so much of this stuff on his back. Um, go for it, Carly. You got some nice things to say there. No, I was just going to basically say that Jared Mounts honestly was our MVP the entire weekend. He literally rented a U-Haul trailer, loaded all of our backdrop, our equipment, not everything, but like like – the stuff that makes us look nice and legit, mm -hmm. right? Loaded it, brought it all yep. down to Richmond, all by himself. He had no like passenger, driver, whatever, nothing. And um, he did, he loaded it all up uh, yesterday, last night, on Sunday night after the whole show was over mm -hmm. and took it all home and then had to unload it all by himself. So absolutely, honestly, cannot thank Jared enough for everything that he has done for us, for the show. Um, over the Richmond Expo. He was awesome. And I, I, I want to get to some of these out. chats. We got, we got high pole guide service. Good stuff per usual. Had a great conversation with Jared at the Expo. Dude, Ooh. Tyler, you were there. I, did I say hi to you? Come on, Probably man. Not. I cannot believe I didn't say hi to you. I'm mm -hmm. so sorry. That sucks. Your tunnel vision when you're there. I mean, and, and then dude, I, and then we got the Bass Cast on Instagram. Hi, I really wish Streamyards would get this stuff together and like transfer the comments and the viewers. But we have about, uh, we have one, two, three. We got about fit, no eight people watching on Instagram. Uh, combined with what we got on there. Anyway, Tyler, I'm really sorry if I missed you. My deepest apologies. You're right. I do have tunnel. I don't even tunnel vision. I was trying to say hi. I was trying to like give everyone some time, but we'll get to that point of the story anyway. But it wasn't just our booth. Jared, um, so Jake Spate and Tackle got a booth as well as Fishing the DMV. <laughs> he did say hi. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. <laughs> you can shoot me next You're time I worst. see you. I shook <laughs> your hand real quick. Said, said, hey, you are a busy man. Didn't want to bother you. Jesus. <laughs> I'm not good with this. You're the worst. There's too many. Anyway, um, so uh, to get back on track, uh, there was uh, – I'm going to butcher this. So that's why you're here. We had, we had Chris Kendrick of his spinnerbait company. CT Spinnerbaits. CT baits. Custom Spinnerbaits. Uh, we had Bent Rod uh, Swim Baits, Hard Baits. And then we had Dead Drift. Um, I think – I believe his name is called Cade. Uh yes. Cade – the Cade is what I call it. It's so funny. His name like, is but, Cade. Yeah, but the thing is like when somebody has like a following – I, you call them Dead Drift. I just call like, them by their like their, their professional name. Yeah, because like SB, I just know him as SB, right. even though I know his like his real name. Right. It's just like because like oh that's their professional and this was out in their own world. So yeah. it's like I call him the Dead Drift. Um, but anyway, the Dead. Drift. Yeah, it's just it's, when you add the, it just sounds so, so much more serious. Anyway, mm -hmm. so there was three 
three individuals in Jake's Bait and Tackle's booth. And Jared helped pack them all up mm-hmm. to an extent, got their backdrops yeah. done, got all their stuff, also got our booth set up, yep. got off work. I couldn't get off work as much or as early as I wanted to. He got down there, set everything up for us, did all this. And this is the big kicker. He did this all on his birthday weekend. I so know. I, I just wanted to oogle kind of over this a little bit, but huge thank you to Jared Mounts of Jake's Main Tackle just for everything you did. Um, you did all this. You didn't have to, and we really appreciate it. Uh, we have, we have. Uh, and this is why you're here too for the English. Joseph Burns. It says, "Hey, it was nice meeting you both yesterday. Had a lot of fun at the expo. Thanks for staying home." So it got there to Friday. Yeah. So Friday is interesting. We get there. This is not our first rodeo. We get there early. We usually right. got there by six thirty, seven o'clock each day is what we shot for to get In around the around there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get there Friday. And we got to like walk around and see all the booths. Um, so, do you want to start with like the cre- the fan interaction, or just kind of like just the? I just booths like to or... say like uh, we had a game plan to stick to. Oh, like, we did. Obviously, you had a schedule. You posted online. Everybody yeah. saw it. And um, we first had a couple interviews in the morning, and then we glided into like booth to booth interactions. And I was the cameraman, obviously. Thomas was there. Mm-hmm. And, um, oh, yeah. My, so so basically, our plan was, basically, we learned from last year at Richmond Expo and all the expos that we've done, because we've been to ICAST, Berkeley Springs. We've done a bunch of, of expos at this point. Mm-hmm. Fridays are generally the hardcore fans, but it's a little bit lighter flow. Right. Sundays are, I'm sorry. Sa- people are sa- still at work. Yeah, and Saturdays are really high traffic. Yeah. Like, so we thought, based on our last experience, we tried to do too many booth-to-booth interactions on a Saturday. Sunday, because we're inexperienced and we were very stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then, oh, maybe Jared Mounts will come on soon. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, he just messaged the group. So we might get Jared, Ma- the Jared Mounts on here. That'd be freaking awesome. Sweet. So anyway, with, with all that said, um, we start on Friday, we get there, we start to walk around before everything starts to kind of get a, a, a an idea, a flavor of all the booths that are actually there. There was a lot of cool vendors. I really am impressed, and we'll get into a little bit of this today. I'm really impressed with the vendors that are there. There were new people. There like were new people than last year, year, which is really cool to see. Yeah. Um, of course, the boats are freaking awesome. I love looking at the Bass Cats. I love looking at what Mare has and the kayaks, Epinax kayaks. Like, um, they're always so much fun to see that. But we'll get into the vendors here in a minute because we're going to talk about the walkthrough. But we get there, and the first thing I was shocked about is the fan interaction is a lot different now. Mm-hmm. And we, that has to be the, that, that that's the thing that we have to start with the fan interaction. Yeah, I believe based on what Carly, Carly and Jared told me, we had about at least 200 to 250 people stop at the booth to say hi to me or you, not just to grab a flyer, but to say hi because they've been a fan of the show. Like a quick shake of the hand and be like, hey, I Thomas, mean, the like fact I'm a that subscriber. there's over 250 people that were there that I, at least I know I said hi to and talked to, it, it's humbling as hell yeah. to go from last year where you had like 15 50 maybe to like there was a line mm-hmm. um there was many more than the 250 i just know that there was at least 250 that i shook hands with that you guys like noticed mm-hmm. and there were more that i didn't because like you know it's like tyler like i barely <laughs> I apparently didn't recognize sorry um christine um, yeah. she stopped by the booth, but I didn't get a chance. Like, I mean, I'm thinking I know, how many people, like three people. And that's the that thing time. is like, that's really interesting is like how many people actually stopped by the booth that I didn't even get to say, have a chance to say hi to yeah. that were actually there. It was insane. The amount of love we got. And I really appreciate, um, all the love that you guys gave us. Uh, the, but then to get from that, we do the walk, the walk around on Friday. Uh, internet service is absolutely fantastic as always. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, it was, oh God, it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, and we were able to get to a lot of booths. And this is really the segment that I really want to get here was, uh, and we're going to get through all this too, because I want to make sure, uh, Ross Hamilton, I, you, y'all were slammed busy. I was, sh- again, I was truly humbled and appreciative of all of you guys. Um, Les even mentioned this. Uh, Les is the guy that runs the Richmond Expo. He even noticed, like, you guys were really busy this year. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a lot of people in your corner wanting to say hi to you. That's pretty crazy for a podcast to be like that big of attention. Yeah. And that's on the top of it. Fishing in the MV had close to 1,200 people watching live Friday morning. Mm -hmm. Between when we turned that camera on till we shut down that first stream on Friday, we had close to 1,200 people watching. It was cold out. There was weather issues. There's a lot of factors there. But, oh, my God, that was impressive. I am humbled and shocked that we had that many people watching. And you have a story of a fan, correct? That well, I mean, I you, you have a story like, of a fan. Well, yeah, a fan that watched, right? Watched? Yeah, that watched it and then came in and said hi. 
Well, yeah. Well, I just told the story then. Okay, cool. I don't so, know. Anyway. You were there too. Okay, oh, yeah. so basically, if you go involved. back to our very first live stream Do that while of I get the, the show, headphones for Jared. while uh, while we were filming um, Friday morning, I actually went back through this morning just to kind of like rewatch it because I wanted to know if it went down the same way like my my memory recalled it. Um, we had David Williams come and introduce himself while we were recording some of the booth to booths. And, um, at the time, Tommy wasn't with us. I think he got stopped somewhere. I had no idea where he was at the time. I was just following Jared around with the camera and, uh, Jared had the microphones and David's like, where's Tommy? And I'm like, I don't know. And so then I'm like running around cause I'm still following Jared with the camera. And I run up to Jared. I'm like, Jared, we've got like a solid fan like this guy comments literally every On single everything. time like i had no idea what he looked like uh and then he introduced himself and jared's like no way and he's like do you want to interview him and i'm like let's go so if you go back to like i would say it's three-fourths of the way through the first day the live stream of the richmond fishing expo uh day one i think is what it the name is um you'll see me basically running through a crowd of people and you'll see this camera just like hustling through a crowd of people running up to like david williams and like handing him a microphone and being like let's hear your story okay and then finally tommy walked up and he got to meet david and it was honestly the highlight of my weekend mm -hmm. i have honestly told everybody i'm like we got to meet david williams i don't know david you're just like on every single episode and you comment on every single one and if at the end of the day, I'm like, well, even if Tommy doesn't have anybody watching, it'll still, it's David will still be there. David will still get to watch. If I can't make it and watch my husband, David will still be there to watch Tommy and support him at the end of the day. And I just thought it was the coolest thing because I've always said, David's your biggest fan. Mm -hmm. Like, even before we met him, Tommy was like, oh, I don't know if anybody's going to come on tonight. And I would just jokingly be like, oh, well, David Williams will be there because he always comments on every single episode. So, and then he was the first person to comment tonight. And what did he say? Go all, scroll all the way. He said, looking forward to this, Thomas. And he's like, Thomas, Jared, and Carly knocked it out of the park for this expo. You all worked very hard to bring the full effects of the show, especially for those who may not have been able to attend. Uh, we got to read this comment. So Hold cool. on, uh, guys. Again, so StreamYard, if you're listening, I hate your platform. <laughs> you, I paid too much for you. And the fact that you let us have Instagram and Twitter, but then we can't show the views or the likes or the comments sucks. So we're going to have to read this one uh, from Jake Harshman. Uh, AKA you... PA dot kayak Basson. Yeah, yeah. AKA feet pick master. Uh, what does it say? It says you should really let her run this podcast, man. She's better at it. Oh uh, no, I a hundred percent agree. She needs her own show. She needs to get into the, uh, the fishing thing. I mean, you had people throwing um, pretty, pretty people sure David what? make some pretty awesome baits too. Uh, David does make some awesome baits. He does. Um, yeah, he I don't does. Know David made baits. Uh, and it, so actually, we're gonna have to get into that too. And then we have uh, Russ here. Uh, I replied to your DM. Yes, absolutely, Russ. I'm gonna. Oh, yeah, we gotta talk about that. So, replied to uh, DM. Yes, uh, I'm gonna be reaching out to you this week. I had got about a 10 billion cards from people wanting to come on the show. Really? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like oh, so in my many people. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> I just was like, so first off, um, I. <laughs> I got I got Jake Harshman on this other screen and he's just his every comment he, he has like, distracts ding, ding, the ding, shit ding, out of me. Ding, ding. It's like Phil is here. Keep it's going. like insane. Anyway, okay. to continue, I had so many people compared to any other show I've went to that are giving me cards saying, like, I was told I need to come on your show. Yeah. First off, thank you so much. It is very humbling. I'm gonna try to get to you. Second off, please message me. I think all of them I handed you um my business card with my email address. Yep. Yep, yep. Because I was, I'm human. If you could just email me, if you could just email me, uh, you know, your name, reintroduce yourself and kind of what you're about, I'll make sure I get to you. And I'm also going to go through all the business cards that I have. And I'm going to be getting out to you for the next two weeks. Right now I have six or seven episodes of the podcast already pre-edited. Jake, who's talking about his feet picks and some other picks that we can't mention on the air. Uh, his episode was recorded in December. It just launched. I have a shit ton of episodes already in the queue ready to go. So the point is like, I'll be getting to you. Don't worry about it. It just might take some time. Uh, we got Barry P. Uh, it was great meeting you two yesterday. Um, I'll get a hold of you very soon, Tommy. Yeah, absolutely, Barry. Yeah, please, please email me, fishingdmv at gmail.com. I'm going to post that right here. Carl, if you want to keep talking while I just type this out. 
Okay, so after we met uh, David, which was the highlight of my weekend, we moved on to talk to some other people. I think we got to rekindle our relationship with the Youth Bass Federation of Virginia. I don't know if I'm saying that correct, but your um, boy, yeah, your old man my friend, boy. Um, I got a lot of friends. You got so much. Okay, okay. Let me tell you how much this pisses me off. Where she keep? Okay, let me hear this. Uh, Yes, I did get my eyes brows waxed, dude, and I got other things waxed too, and I feel fantastically free. Anyway, I know. Like every time you switch over here, here, I'm looking at him. Anyway, the point is, um, that was the frustrating thing with you. Is my God, she is better at this than me in a hundred percent. I'd go booth to booth talking to people, no problem. She goes booth to booth after they leave the booth, and I'm holding the damn camera. The person running the booth would look at me, nudge me, hand me a bait, and say, that's for her, and walk away. This dude gave her like a two, like a $100 bait or whatever, and he just nudged me, handed this thing to me, he's like, that's for her, and just walks away. I'm like, what the hell? And then you had some dude giving you like fishing lessons? Fishing like, lessons, yeah. Yeah, how to like pitch and flip and stuff? Yeah, I was at the Youth Bass Federation of Virginia, and uh, Mr. James Vick Sr. gave me some uh, some bait tossing tips, and I learned a lot from him, Tommy. I've been on the boat with you probably at this point, like 100 hours altogether, and I learned more from James than the hell I've you ever got, learned you, from you. You won a goddamn tournament on my boat. Shut the hell up. Yeah, from pure skill and talent. You just, you broke a rod on the hook set, a yeah, $200 rod. My bad. <laughs> we didn't you'll, win enough in the Thursday night. You win nighter. some and you lose some, Thomas Aaron. We lost a G. Loomis rod that you set into a log that was <laughs> out of the water. I don't even know what that is. The log was out of the water. It wasn't even in the water. Is. You set the hook on a fish that didn't exist in out of the goddamn water. It made no sense. It tugged back, I swear. It didn't tug. It, so um, I agree with David Williams. I agree. If you can't make a Monday night, we would have left. Till, yeah, probably. <laughs> That would be definitely right. Uh, Doug Fitzgerald, uh, good meeting you all at the expo at the August uh, County Fishing Expo. Yeah, Doug, it was fantastic to meet you as well. I can't believe yes. she said that. Yeah, yeah, Jake, that's about right with us thing. Jake, we will be running our own podcast episode soon. It'll be like it'll be like after hours where we can actually. Um, well, yeah, you don't drink. I'll drink for you. That's fine. Um, I want to make sure we get through all the thank yous here too. Brad Barber, it was great meeting. It was all great meeting you. And this also showed me that we really need to do some meetups too as well. We need to do more Absolutely. meetups. It can't just be the Richmond Expo. Yeah. Uh, especially for like all the Patreon members that came out. Again, guys, like the fact is that we got our Patreon up to 72. And our goal is to get up to 100 Patreon supporters so we can keep this show going mm-hmm. through 2024 without like, you know, going bankrupt. And like yep. that was, the love was amazing. Yep. Um, but to get off this, on, let's not talk about me and all this crap but let's talk about the expo and mm-hmm. all the vendors mm-hmm. um one of the ones that stands out is your girls tiger baits did i say My that right girls well so i didn't know at the time she didn't want to be on camera the person that owns tiger baits i love you guys by the way and so i said i thought it'd be cool if carly who basically everyone there loves no one likes me I said, like, Carly, instead of being behind the camera, why don't you just be in front of the camera? And that worked extremely well because she got a bunch of stuff thrown at her. And so she goes up to Tiger Baits, and that was a great little conversation. Their baits were really cool, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was really, really cute. Um, She absolutely said no at first, and then I was like, okay, but how about if Tommy just shows the baits off while you talk, and then you won't actually be on camera? And then she finally caved, and she talked to me for a little while at that time. And... That worked out really well. I really, really enjoyed it. And then I got to talk to uh, my boy James over at the Youth Bass Federation. And, um, yeah, and that's when we wrapped up the interviews for Friday. Yeah, and that ended Friday. And then Saturday happens. Yeah. Friday was an amazing day. I thought, like, this is a good groove. We were talking to people. Oh, I'm sorry. We had two, we had a couple of fantastic guests, too. We had Jake and we had, um, we had the... SWFA. We had uh, the first interview of Aaron Friday. Aaron Ball, who talks about the Virginia Citation Program, which is absolutely amazing. Huge shout out to you. Um, I really, really, really want to partner with the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources to give more of like an accolade, a trophy or something like that to people that win the Citation Program. A lot of people talk to me like they love the program. They love the idea that they just want something more than just a piece of paper. Yeah. I can donate a plaque or I can build one with from Michael. I'll do something to help that out because I think the program is just so freaking cool. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, the Richmond Crappie uh, organization is so freaking awesome. I'm going to be covering uh, this year the Richmond Crappie Tour. So we'll have crappie fishing in the rotation this year, which is going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, That's super duper. Yeah, and then Doug has a great question here. Uh, I hope you all can make 
to the August County Fishing Augusta and, County Fishing and Outdoor Expo. Yes. Doug Fitzgerald wants us oh, to make oh, it. Oh, oh, we got oh, the man. Oh, he's in. Your your he's earbuds are right there. Oh, no, right there. These. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Hold on, guys. We we have the man, the myth, the legend, the guy that made this all work. He is basically, he's like if Jesus came back with a nicer beard. Let's go. Uh, we're gonna get my earbuds in here. Jared's all right. Here. here he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Oh my gosh, there he is. Can you hear us? Oh, guys, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Womp womp womp. Can you... Why can't he hear us? <gasps> can you hear me? Perfect. Are you uh -oh. good? Did I turn him up? I don't know. Can you hear me? Let me see if the, the... There he is. Got me? Jared, can you hear us? I can hear you. So he can hear can us, hear we just can't hear him. Yeah. This makes it fun. That's exciting. Oh, let's try that again. <laughs> now that I turned the mic on. That, that makes it, that makes more sense. You got me now? <laughs> yeah, I do. It's my fault because I forgot to turn the earphones on. Um, yeah, hey, we were just... Long, guys? All right. It's going great. We have over 40 people watching right now, and we're just doing uh, an hour. We're starting from 8 to 9, just recapping the Richmond Expo and getting our vibes about everything. Uh, we talked about how you basically single-handedly took us all down there, you know, Dead Drift, Chris, uh, Bent Rod, us. Um, and then we have, we, we have so many people just saying, like, huge shout-out to you, big respect to him, turning a pastime into uh, not into dollar signs. Like, you know, huge shout-out to you for everything you did. What, what were some thoughts that you had about the Richmond Expo? Uh, I think it's, you know, for us, we've frequented that for for quite some time. Many years, we, you know, take a group of guys down and and uh, experience the, the Expo and then spend the night, have dinner, have a lot of laughs. Um and then the next day, go to Bass Pro, Green Top. And uh, so for the last two years, being able to experience it as a vendor with you guys fishing the DMV last year. And then this year, your second year, you know, going back was really cool. Um, it was really neat to, it's like some people said they they feel like they know you, uh, know us, you know, from seeing your face all the time. Um, it's almost like a big family reunion, if you will. And uh you know, it's just really cool and just giving an opportunity for our local bait makers and vendors just to put themselves out there and um, be able to sell their product and just interact with, you know, other anglers and fishermen and hopefully put things in their hands that they can go out and have success on the water. I was shocked. And then, of course, you chime in if you have any questions, too. I was shocked at how busy we just got through Friday and about Friday was like we're getting to our vibes. Uh, we. We had, um, and I forgot this person, I'm sorry. Shallow Water Fishing Adventures drove all the way down just to see the whole thing. I gave him a shout out already. He, okay, cool. Uh, we did, so he came down, we had dinner. It's like, all right, this is a good flow. Mm -hmm. Saturday happens. I was not expecting that many people. I was, and you and I personally, like we've done iCast together, Berkeley Spink. We've done a few shows, Dale City last year. That was the busiest show crowd-wise I think we've all been a part of, right? It was Yes, Saturday was packed. It was wall to wall people back in our corner, and uh, you couldn't even walk down the aisle. There were so many people uh, there. So yeah, good turnout. What um with with Saturday and with all the people that you met, is there anyone any like interactions that stuck out to you? Because we're kind of like going. That's the next thing we're gonna do, and we have one from David Williams. Hey Jared, it was an honor meeting you on uh, on Saturday on Friday. What's going on, David? It, and who was David the one that we forgive me was that the one Carly we went back to yeah that was so cool uh Carly was like hey he was one of our first you know first supporters and so we went back and interviewed him and uh you know again that's that's what you know Thomas you and I have talked that's what it's all about you know it's about the people out there it's about the platform it's about bringing everybody together uh bringing their voice uh, you know to the industry and and that's Again, for you, I think for you to be able to give the local people, the regional people, a voice um, on a on a bigger stage, I think that is is really awesome. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just I think all the people, I think, and again, it's just it's one big, um, like I said before, one big reunion. I mean, just and I, I've said before too, ninety nine point nine percent of the people in the fishing industry are good people. Uh, you're going to have that you know, less than 1%, but 
Uh, just so many good people out there. It was, it was cool to be able to meet everybody. Um, and again, I've always said too, from, you know, uh, Dave from Fish Tales, who said he's been doing it for 30 years. These guys are talking about Bassarama, which I don't remember, but that goes way back to, yeah. you know, you had uh, Mitchell on there, McCotter. You know, we had some of our young anglers on there. Um, you've done the Lake Ann Elites before. We saw a lot of kids run around there. So, you know, from in the young man with the, uh, the mirror analogy, like that was classic. And those that maybe didn't see it, um, he, he was looking at one of Bent Rod's big, big swim baits. And his mom came up to him and said, uh, you know, whatever his name was, said, uh, you know, son, our, our, the fish in our pond just aren't big enough to eat that big bait. And he looked right at his mother and he said, mom, fish don't have mirrors. And he said, if we can, we can look in mirrors and I know that I'm four foot six and I can't beat up that big guy, but fish don't look in mirrors. They don't know how big or small they are and they're going to eat big. So, uh, just stuff like that. So from young to old, um, you know, everybody's there for the same reasons, which, you know, uh, it's interesting too. We're there for the same reasons which I've been saying it's the fish. We're all going after the fish, but at the end of the day, when we get out there, we say catching a fish is a bonus. And really, again, it's just a shared experience. It's about the relationships. It, it, it really is. And then we got, we got so many comments and loving comments. This is insane. So we're going up right now. Again, if you guys don't know, we're going up against uh, Smallmouth Crush. Uh, at 8 a.m., he's doing a live stream too. And, and I always say, like, no one has an audience, it's a shared audience on YouTube. And the fact that we have over 40 people watching this late at night when I usually start at six or seven is just absolute. I'm floored by the love. Uh, high pole guide service again, Tyler. I'm so sorry that I somehow forgot you shook my hand. Uh, that's probably for a lot of people. Shout out to Dave. Dave is awesome. Dave, you are going to win a gift card uh, to Jake's Bait and Tackle just for all the love that you support. Uh, and then we got a bunch of comments here. Carl, you're going to read this one because English is my second language. Okay. Joseph Burns is my favorite vendors were Lynn's Hooks, Ball Sacks Fishing Line. He gave me Fishing Line, by the way. And the young kid in the booth next to you selling the hand tied flies, which is dead drift fishing, aka Cade Bailey. I want to like to say too, um, and then Jared, I don't know if this is public knowledge, but did you say J uh, Dead Drift got a big sale? Correct? Is that something that we can that we can say on air? Yeah, I haven't heard uh, exactly what um, I heard somebody say they were going to order five hundred or something. I have to follow wow. up with him to see what that was going to be. But he also oh, yeah. found out um, while at the show, he was at the fly fishing show in Doswell, same Expo Center last weekend, and they received uh, an email. There's a Midwest fly fishing uh, expo event happening out in the Midwest. Uh, and he got invited to that as a, whatever his vice is, um, as a junior sponsor, he got invited. They're going to fly him out. They're going to pay for his lodging. Uh, the kid's in seventh grade, 13 years old. I mean, it's uh, what, what a great opportunity. According to Danielle. We got Danielle mom. Bailey. Uh, there she is. Cro crappie flies. Okay. Cool. That's freaking awesome. Um, and then we got, uh, and it, yeah, like the, some of the, I mean, some of the ones that really stuck out to me, like vendor wise, uh, deep Creek lures, I didn't realize they made so many custom hand poured like baits. And so if people don't know, and I'm assuming people do, but just to give you a, a recap, you know, when you do a hand poured bait, it's a, it's a process to create that. Uh, and so generally what you do with that compared to a painted crankbait, so you take one crankbait, you can make one crankbait mm -hmm. and you can paint it and there's a return on investment to make a worm that's a unique color is a way more intensive process in my opinion because you don't just make one Cinco and that's it you have to make a huge batch of them right. it's a huge process right. and the fact that they make that many unique colors is very unique uh, i thought that was a really unique um booth uh i'm trying to think of another one that i really that really stood Coming out to about me. the lynn hooks too right next to us I, it took me two days two and a half days to go over and like actually talk to him wave to him say hi but to see what he had what he was doing and he's got a really unique hook that you just make a loop and you pull it down you make five wraps pull it down five more wraps pull it down and we tested it it worked he gave me a bunch of samples i bought some he gave us some samples to try out the shop um it's great for guys that need these okay they can't see they're trying to you know hit the hole there and, and get your knot and uh <laughs> we'll be, it'll be interesting we're going to pass them out at jake's to customers and see what they think but um, they, he was from out in St. Louis. Um, and so that was kind of cool too. So we'll see where that goes. There's I would also, agree with that. Whoever said Lynn hooks. 
Yeah, Lynn Hooks is a really good one. Um, there's just so many. There was that, uh, what was that bait company? This is, um, my apologies if I forgot your name. There was a bait that you bought after we went to the booth where the hook was on the tail and it had just a weird shimmy action. Uh, was it an Ohio bait company, right, Carly? It was in Ohio, yeah. Yeah, it was an Ohio bait I think it was Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. It uh, it was a really unique bait. That one was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Oh, they were near, uh, crap. I should know this. What was that booth? It's Vibe? No, no, no. It was a big fancy booth that we didn't do this year. B Biz Bates. It's next to Biz Bates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there was another booth right beside that. Yeah. It was also from Ohio, which was kind of funny. It seemed like the Ohio. There's a lot of Ohio together. bait companies, which is interesting. And they had like the uh, the spinner baits that almost looked like flies combined oh, with spinners. Oh, the bucktail, the Malibu, the, the Marabou. Mm -hmm. and Not Malibu. And they had like the, the, yeah, bucktails. Which is interesting about that that is such a small mouthy thing and that was so cool about that is maybe something like that you don't see it i cast or gets a lot of wake is a marabou chatterbait or a marabou jig but in our area of the country that's a big deal this time of year um yeah like that i thought that was really cool I'm trying to think of some other stuff that really stuck out to me i don't know but while you're thinking david williams has a comment. we have so many questions here oh my well, god you guys i love he all says, of you we were getting ready to leave after about three laps around the place and i told my wife that I'm not leaving the expo until I say hello to Thomas. That's guys. That's yeah, y'all are just really, really <laughs> sweet. Uh, we got a couple more. I need bodyguards for Thomas next year. Oh my no, gosh, we should hire some. David Williams again. Thank you, Jared. You are a rock star. Love it. Uh, Pleasure meeting you. We have another one here on Instagram. Where did it go? I saved it. It was Jared. Thanks again for everything you did. Happy birthday. Thank There's you. a lot of people that, yeah, yeah. The love for Jared is strong tonight. Let's Travis see. said something about having baits at Jake's Bait and Tackle. Which one? I don't know. Travis Cyber said something. At yeah, one Travis time. was at Jake's today, so I took my I stash. I, I buy, yep. I Stop buy, by the shop. Yep. Buy a lot of baits that I think would be good to carry in our area for our anglers and and then I also get a lot of samples and uh, bring those back and we kind of share those out. So Travis was at the shop today. So, so he got some of the love too. And, uh, was taking some of that. I'm going to try it out for us and report back. Um, Travis is going to be a daddy here soon too. Uh, when, as he walked out the door today, I meant to tell him we're going to try to sell him a neck cause he's, he's going to be having a new baby coming here. Uh, maybe a five, six pounder, eight pounder. I don't know. <laughs> Little girl. That's so bad. That's funny. Uh, another great vendor. Ooh, that's a really good one, Larry. I didn't think of that yes. one. And that was the one you were talking about, Thomas. Rod Bender, he had a lot of good base. Young guy, young guy, uh, entrepreneur spirit. Uh, his story, I listened to his stories like a lot of people trying to fish off the front of the boat, but just not able to get it done. And so he you know, just has, has a passion for this stuff and, and trying to make a go at, at the bait business. And we also had a lot of cool guests. I want to have a huge shout out to all the guests that came on the show. Uh, please, And this really gets into... Saturday for me, and I told, I think I told Jared, I told you, when you go booth to booth, or when I have guests, so in, in Expos past, I would sit at the mic and talk for 10 hours, but you have a new guest, and you introduce them and you get a conversation, and it's very easy for you to like, break that up in your mind throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And embarrassingly, maybe this is just a problem that I had. And if it is, I apologize. When you are meeting so many people in 10 hours, Right. And it's constantly people coming up to you. It was really getting, everything was blurring together. And the day was like this one thing. And it was like getting hard to remember people. So again, if, if uh, I apologize, if I, if I forgot your name, but thank you all for coming by the booth. Uh, the crappie fishing was amazing. Talking to Shane about his tournament organization was amazing. Um, having, um, having uh mccrickard back on to talk about what's going on with dwr was amazing having uh everyone coming over from woods and water those kids won the uh, virginia tech they really won in our books finishing so high in florida which was absolutely amazing really thought those kids worked their butts off one moment that stuck out to me was J jared is just so good at this last year he got to interview this little girl that won casting kids and laser he knew that he's gonna interview her her this year he found this 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 boy just out of the thousand of people and just like a hawk picked him out and whipped the mic out and like just put it in his face and that dude did not miss a beat no. it looked like he, he was, was in, on it he was intended to be on a mic 
I swear, at the end of the interview, too, he was like, Mom, I want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> like, that's literally what he said as we walked away. It was amazing. Uh, it was, it he said was, he was going to be a charter boat guy. I said, what are you going to do to grow yeah. up? He said, I'm going to be a charter boat captain. So one day, somebody's going to be on his boat. Yeah, uh, it was that was freaking awesome. We got Steve, uh, Steve fishing. Thank you all for the live coverage of the expo. Special shout out to Jared for going above and beyond. I hope you all get some rest after a busy weekend. I don't need rest. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and, and then you know, Jake, Jake Harshman, really hope you like your episode, dude. We'll get you back on the show. I want to go fishing with you too. Um, and that's the other thing too, guys. Uh, I talked about you this. I talked about oh to both of you. I need to fish more because it's so weird that I'm getting to this position where I, and it's weird. It's like, your audio is going in and out really bad. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, I, it's, it's, I'm blessed with what's happening here, but it's also like, I need to make sure I have balance in life. So when people that I've made friends with want to go fishing, it's like, I'm not just stuck in the basement, you know, doing stuff. You know what I mean? So I'm going to try to be better about that this year to make sure I get involved with everyone out there, including Jake's. Um, oh, and a huge shout out to Ricky. I really want to make this known. Like Ricky, we were making jokes for a while there. Like, I didn't know if that was his kid or not, honestly. Like, I just knew, like, there was this kid following Ricky around. I was like, wait, I didn't know he's married, if he had a kid or not. And he's like, oh, no, this is someone I'm apprenticing. It's like, dude, we don't have people like that anymore. Like, when I was growing up, we had people oh, like that that would mentor. I know you're talking about now. But, I yeah, know, yeah, but it's like, yeah, it's just, yeah. it warms my heart that we need more men like that to mentor. Mm -hmm. And, Jared, you grew up in the school system. You well, you've been involved in this. What happened to the mentorship program? It doesn't exist anymore. It makes Ricky that much more special. Yeah, it really does. You know, and Ricky is not married, doesn't have any kids, and and he's fished, you know, he's fished at a competitive level uh, in the Bass Nation. He's actually headed down to Okeechobee, I think, next weekend for an open. Um, and just a wealth of knowledge, fished with Jeff Luger for a long time. Uh, they were tough to beat, but uh he's he's uh I think he's approaching 60, he was said, and you know, what's so cool is as we were looking for coaches for our Frederick County team, I thought what better, better guy than him. And cause he's just passionate about the sport, but he's but like, to your point, he wants to share his knowledge. He's, he's over too many times when you get into competitive fishing, it's you're, you're so focused on competing and beating the other guy. He's been there and done that. Now he's at a point where he says, you know what? I want to give back. I want to give back everything I've learned. And just like you say, mentor young kids. And it's so cool because you know, he's got two of the boys on his boat, which finished very well at, at uh, Bugs last year. I think a second place finish. And uh, second day, one of his, one of the boys, Gavin, had a had big fish. But uh, And we have like half our team calls him. They'll call him up and ask him questions after a tournament and say, you know, what happened here? What should I have done there? And so it's just, but to your point, mentorship, taking a kid fishing. And, and what you said, too, about balance and, and back to what you were saying with this, the problem, this is a good platform, a good thing, but YouTube, social media, everything, you know, we, you see numbers, you're looking at your analytics and you're seeing numbers. When you go to a show like this, you, you're now putting, you're taking that number and you're putting a face with it. You're putting a name with it as a person, it's a live person. And so to your point, Thomas, whether it's a young person, an older person, a veteran, like a friend, family member, you guys fish together. My wife and I fish together this year in a tournament. Like it's, it's slowing down enough to take the time to get out and enjoy God's creation and just, and fish. And so I, I think you're onto something there, but yes, we do need more mentors to take people out, take them fishing. Cause there is a lot of young people that want to get into this, that are doing this, uh, that could use somebody that, that can show them the ropes. And after Jared said something that was very wholesome and correct about how you should live your life, I'm going to be shallow and be like, because of you guys, this is the charts right now. This is this is the podcast charts that shows you all the downloads in the United States of America. Fishing the DMV is at 142 in, on the chart playlist. If you go up one, two, three, four, five, six, that's Michael Iaconelli's podcast. We are six spots away from overtaking Michael Iaconelli. Six, seven, eight, nine. We are nine spots away from taking over Luke Duncan's low budget live. Fishing the DMV literally could this year overtake Michael Iaconelli's podcast and Luke Duncan's podcast. I want everyone in the chat to let that sink in. That is insane. That shouldn't happen. We are a region. We just care about this area and y'all. We care about the Shenandoah River. There's been never no Bassmaster Classic on the Shenandoah River. And you guys are eating it up. And the fact that you could be like, yeah, we're just as big as Iconelli or Luke Duncan. It's, I woke up this morning. I was like, that's not right. There's gotta be, a, it's, it's fake. That, that can't be correct. <laughs> 
But I just wanted to like share that with you guys. Like that's because of what we've built here and that we we just care about this little area here. Um, and Phil, Phil's in the chat here. Uh, bless him, Carly Go. Okay, Phil says being a mentor is hard. Thomas blows up my phone at all hours. Definitely an important role. Thank that's you, Phil, about right. for Huge being Tom's Phil. mentor. Phil's taught me how to navigate the streets of Baltimore, and I appreciate that. Uh, oh, Phil, my man. Uh, K- Cade is uh, Bailey Cade is. Bailey is ready and willing to fish. Yeah, dude, absolutely. I want to learn how to fly fish. I told um, Cade should teach you. Yeah, I, I, I've been talking to the guys at the DWR, and huge shout out. I, I can't. Please, StreamYard, fix it to where I can get Instagram stuff over here. But uh, he said there's guys, multiple guys in the DWR that have listened to over six hours of the podcast. Uh, McCricker said, I listened to six hours of your podcast on the road trip. Absolutely love Odenkirk. He even mentioned to me, like, we joke about him being, like, the Hollywood of the DWR, which I think it's hilarious that everyone agrees that's the inside joke Y'all there. Y'all worship him, man. Huh? You worship him. Odenkirk? Yes. Dude, the dude could literally quit the agency today and be a model for Harley Davidson tomorrow oh and he'd be fine. I got a, and I got a quick Odenkirk story. So his father-in-law <laughs> actually passed away. We're cousins and uh, he married my, my first cousin. Um, and her father passed away a couple weeks ago. So we just went to the, to the, um, memorial or whatever you want to call it. And I'm talking to Sharon is his wife. Okay. Horse, horse lady. Um, and I looked over her shoulder and I saw Odenkirk walk in, John, and I was like, oh, there's John. And I looked at her and I said, everybody loves John. I said, we all love John. And it dawned on me. I stopped. I said, Sharon, we love you too. <laughs> and she laughed. She said, I get it all the time. She said, even dad, she said, I, I joke that dad liked him more than he liked me. And so <laughs> it is true. He's something about his personality. He's, he's well liked. He's very lovable. Very knowledgeable too. Very knowledgeable. He's very knowledgeable. Um, very down to earth, too. So, yeah. and that's the perfect mixture for him. It, it, it really is. And you know, there's a story. Um, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to give up. I don't want to give up his name or anything else like that. But there was this young man that went up to me, and this was like this. We were, I was listening to this podcast. I want to give away the person, but he's just like always be humble and be like grateful of where you are. And there was this dude. Uh, you know who I'm talking about? Um, Not yet. He became a Patreon member, and um, he came up to me and he was shaking. And it was so weird because he's like this 18 year old person. And I don't know why this stuck out to me in my head, but it did. Amongst the sea of everything was when this dude walked up and I could tell like he was he was nervous. Um, and it just was humbling, I guess. Like, I don't you know what I mean? Like you do this and you don't feel like we bicker like we don't like we don't care if the camera's on or not. We're going to talk right. the way we talk. Right. And it's just weird to like then have these people that like want to talk to you about this like hey you do a good job i had steve camp i think come up to me uh like he runs at least there's like oh you did a great job you do a great job it's just, it's, so, it's so weird it's i could tell when people wanted to talk to you i would just be like hey it's, hey it, focus. it's weird though and i don't something. know how I, i'm still i guess that's the weird thing is i'm processing it still because yeah. it's the first time i think when i went with um it's the first time thomas felt famous in his no, entire life it's not it's not famous it's more of the responsibility yeah. to be better like when you're you can't joke around you, you got to be just you got to be respectful of the audience and that they actually it gave their time. It doesn't hit this. him how many people actually love the show and listen to the show and respect him as a person until he sees like the real life human being standing in front of him. And I think that's kind of like what hit you over the weekend was like there are so many people that love the show and respect you and appreciate all that you have brought to the DMV area. It's hard because like the sponsor thing, like when you when you talk about sponsors, they want ten thousand or a billion or whatever numbers. But then you realize like, do you understand how many a thousand is? Like if you had a thousand people listen, that fills up an audience. And it, yeah. it's just it, it humbles you because it's statistics. Like the numbers can almost numb you to just how many fifty people are or a thousand or whatever it is. And like yeah. that's humbling. Like whether you ever hit a million or whatever, the fact that we have what we have is just I am very grateful for what we have, and hopefully we can do something in the future to give back to everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, guys, this isn't going to be a thing long stream too. or anything. No, but the cool thing, too, you're – it's like soon – before it was ever done, we stopped, and, and I know Carl and I were talking about this, and you and I talked about this, like, okay, you know, this one's a wrap. What do we – what do we – what do we want to do? What are you going to do next year? What's it going to look like? Do we tweak this, adjust that? Mm-hmm. Do we just – clean slate and start over with something different. And so the idea that to your point, you know, it's not, it's never going to, it's not that it's never going to be good enough. There's, you're always looking to make it better to improve upon it and grow with it. And so that's, that's cool. It, it really is. And then Jared, again, 
This all couldn't happen without you. You are you are it's, the glue that holds us together. Not, it's not me. It's it's uh, it's a fishing industry that <laughs> you know we've been fortunate to get into, and and uh, and but it was even I think it was David Smith. Uh, you interviewed him and He's like Becky too, Gore. Yeah. So example two. Oh, I mean Becky. Becky Gore. You know when she came up there. Now she's since retired. Now anybody that knows her, Orange County fishing, like she was Virginia Bass Nation when it started, and for me probably eight, 10 years ago when I saw a young man that was fishing at Longwood university came up and gave her a big hug and said, Miss Gore, I want to thank you for everything you've done for me. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for you. And just seeing how she ran that program fishing program that has catapulted that young man, who knows what he's doing now, but, and she's still there. And so David Smith going up and same thing, giving her a hug. I mean, that's the thing. It's like you say, mentorship, young, old, you know, it's not, a, it's not me. It's not about me. It's about, you know, just sharing in that experience. Um, I told some of the old timers day at Jake's, we might rent a bus next year and bus them down. And so, uh, anyway, good stuff. It's not me. It's, it's the fishing industry and it's just fun to be part of it. Whatever you donated a ton of your time this weekend. Yeah. Really and we got us some questions. <clears throat> we got some questions here, guys, and then we're going to give away some prizes and then we're going to be done for you. And this will be short and sweet. This is more of a thank you to Jared. Thank you to everyone that watched this weekend. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for Tiger Bates for putting up with us and the fudge guy. Thank you to him because he oh, gave us so many samples. The one person we didn't talk about, the person that made out like a bandit this weekend what? was the ice cream dude. Holy Yo. God. Every. <laughs> He literally probably could have retired. You better quit fishing and start selling ice cream. I, everyone went to that guy. Then, it's insane. Amazing. That line was endless all weekend long. Anyway, so Cade's mom, Danielle, says it is you and Mr. Jerry and Jenny. Your support means everything to Jared. And then Scylla Johnson. Hello, Scylla. friend. Scylla, listen, please message me if I forget to message you this week uh, because I'm overwhelmed. I need to get you on the show. I want to get you on the show. You want to do in-person or remote. We're going to make that happen now that we're getting closer to the fishing season. And hopefully that I don't forget time. this time. Sorry. Jill Mounts. It's great Ooh. when the fishermen and your guys put the information out for the kids. Doug Fitzgerald. Amen. Let's go. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to do, we're going to start with this. Bear Winslow, watch out fishing with Jake Harshman. He'll steal pics of your feet for profit. Was nice me meeting you guys on Friday at the show. Was able to be there all weekend. Thanks to you guys. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, Bear, uh, please message me, fishing the DMV at gmail.com, Instagram, or Facebook. You just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. I don't know why. Maybe I got knocked on the head. Uh, crop, Crappie Kev, hey guys, great job covering the expo. Thank you so much. We will be live at. Um, so we're going to be at Dale City. We're going to be at the Dale City Fishing Expo. The very next weekend, there is a banquet for Charlie Taylor. If you guys don't know, he's yes. over 80 years old. He's been battling cancer. Uh, he's stepping down from the club. I can't miss the banquet. So I was going to go to – there was another expo I was going to go to that weekend, but I'm not going to go to that one. I have to go to Charlie's banquet. After that, we have the kayak fishing seminar extravaganza at Jake's. Mm -hmm. That's February 24th. And then – Berkeley Springs is somewhere. I have no, I'll be there. I just don't know when it is off the top of my head. So there's that March. as well. March. March 9th. March 9th. For the kayak? L.L. Stuff? Bear. Yeah, Jake's feels feet picks. Yes. I just think like his broom <laughs> is like the, the serial killer from Silence of the Lambs. Like, you know, put the lotion on the skin or it gets the hose again. Don't get Tommy started on feet picks. Uh, I feel like he that's will like go Jake. all night. On feet? Feet picks. You would just talk about hey, Pokex hey, all night. Great meeting you at the Richmond. Has our number spot. Great meeting you guys at the Richmond Expo. Thank <laughs> you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, we got the August County Fishing Expo. Yep, tenth, eleventh. Augusta. I, Augusta County Fishing I Expo. I will go possibly, but I'm asking the wife. But I don't know if I can bring the booth or anything next year. I'll do. The more sponsors we get, the more money we get, the more we can do this, guys. This is I. This is the one thing that shocked me. Were these people that would go from, um, where was that place in North Carolina? Raleigh. They go from Raleigh to Richmond to Tennessee. You My, all are insane. My, and they would go then do the Bassmaster Classic. Yeah, yeah. Y'all go all over. That's crazy. <gasps> oh, Tiger Bates told us a cool thing, though. Did they? And another booth told us a Bassmaster Classic booth. Guess the price. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. $5,800. 
for a booth at the Bassmaster Classic. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. Five thousand eight hundred dollars for a booth the same size we got at the Richmond Fishing Expo. Like what? I, I can't wow. It's insane. That's just I don't know. I don't oh. know if I can do all those back to back to back, but we're gonna get through all the comments and then we're gonna be done. Right. Uh that's how Jake that's how Jake pays his turning fees. Oh, we're just like just shitting on Jake Harshman right now. Okay, I like it. Um, let's see. I think that's all the comments. I want to make sure we... Oh, we're going to give away two more gift cards. Uh, the next one is to... Uh, TP. 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 You just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle if you're still there. Please message me, Instagram, Facebook, or uh, uh, fishingthedmv at gmail.com. And the last one, again, it has to go to this guy, uh, David Williams. Um Again, message me. You, you're a fan favorite. You've literally commented on every video I've ever posted, and that's a ton at this point. And it was really nice to meet you. Um, yeah, please, you know, get back to me. I'd like to get you into the Patreon program too. Somehow, as like an honorary member. Um, again, I, I really, can't, I really appreciate. It. Uh, eyebrows are only hundred dollars for two days. It's not about that's the. Good. It's not about the money necessarily for the booth thing. It's more of like the the time. Uh, but no, I, will, I think they were just comparing. I'll that. be there though. I'll try to be there though, 100%. Um, Ooh, TP still on. He said thank you. And huh? TP said, TP said thank, TP, thank you. Yeah. And then next year, guys, we're going to be doing more shows each year. I'm going to add a show. Uh, this year, I did Dale City's being added. Um, so I have three shows this year. Wait, no, I have four shows this year. Yep. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I have four shows this year. So next year, we'll do five. Uh, can you donate my gift card to one of the high school? F- oh, wow. Uh, Yes, Jared will make that call. So what we'll do is I will donate the card to Jared, and Jared will donate it to a, a child in need. Are you sure, Bear? If is that what you want? What if we gave you a foot pick of Jake? I think Let me sure. ask Jake. He could get that in return. But yes, one hundred percent. I will donate the gift card to Jared. Jared can donate it to a kid, and we'll post that on social media. That works. We appreciate cool. that, Bear. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. Last, right, last card, one. and then we're done for the night. <gasps> is that from my brother from another mother? Really glad you decided to come to. Was it care and hang out? Kerr. It's been Kerr and hang out. It's been so cool to see you rise on the scene and everything you do for our area take root. That said, I'm wiping the floor with you when you spring when spring comes for the BBB XO XO. Now I love you too, bud. Uh, yeah, I really want to go fishing with you uh, one more time uh, before you hit another tree <laughs> with your vehicle or something like that. Um, absolutely sure. Okay, cool. Awesome, guys. Again, okay, cool. Now, so here's the plan, guys. Uh, just a little sit wrap. So tomorrow, this will be re-uploaded as a podcast episode. Wednesday, have a really cool episode. We have a dude who went from a boat captain in Key West to running boats from Key West to California as a captain. Then he got into the outdoor industry as a photographer, and now he lives in Richmond. Really cool biopic. And then I have another episode Friday. And then I think... In February, at some point, we'll have a brand new What's New at Jake's because what's hilarious is there's this guy called Doc who's now become a celebrity. And I get emails all the time about when Doc's coming back on the damn show. (laughs) So people are upset that we missed an episode of Doc. So I got to get with Doc and Jared to see like when we can have another in person What's New with Doc. I think will be called the monthly uh, installment because that's people. What's up, Doc? People really love Doc. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Doc's going to ICAST with us this year, so that's going to be interesting. So we got to incorporate Doc at ICAST. So, oh, that be fun. That's the theme. Yep, and we're going to ICAST this year too, as well. Oh, that's um, an announcement in so, its own. Oh yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. yeah, we're going to ICAST too, as well, guys. Whoop, whoop. So. That's happening. But anyway, thank you guys all so much. This is a shorter stream. Next week is going to be a lot of fun. I'll make an announcement about next week's uh, Monday Night Live later in the week. And uh, we'll see you guys next time Blake on said something. Fishing the DMV. No. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.